Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski -Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. Manufacturers on the cutting edge of their respective industries all seem to have one thing in common. They're either innovating new products or new categories of products, or they're watching what their consumers are building and modifying and simply producing that right from the factory. The best example of this type of forward thinking and direct response to consumers' demands at the moment is the 174-inch mountain segment. Competition is always good. If nothing else, it certainly highlights the high and low points of the competing vehicles. Before the RMK, the Summit 174 was the only 174-inch factory mountain sled you could get, so by default, it was the best. Now though, it has a competitor that it can be put up against. This will undoubtedly reveal anything that's not perfect with either sled. We're gonna stick to our usual method of doing a shootout by looking at a number of different test categories and then comparing both vehicles in each. The vehicle that wins the highest number of categories at the end of it all gets our nod. The categories we feel are most important for a 174 inch mountain sled are weight, durability, power, handling, suspension, and overall layout and design. By shedding material anywhere it was not needed, Polaris's Axis RMK has achieved the title as the lightest mountain sled in pretty much every class, including this one. But sometimes a design feature or piece of technology requires a trade-off in the weight department, and sometimes that trade-off is well worth it. Skidoo felt the benefits of their T-Motion suspension system, heavier though it might be, were worth the trade-offs, and despite the extra poundage, actually make the sled easier to ride. So which is it? Is the RMK easier to ride because it's lighter, or is T-Motion so good it makes up for being heavier? When we took the time to break this question down to its very core, the answer was this. The difference in ease of handling between the lighter RMK and the heavier Summit isn't enough to justify the extra weight. So one point, RMK. Now let's talk about durability. This is a big one, because there's really nothing worse than being stranded out in the backcountry with a broken sled while your buddies are still out playing in the trees. The RMK has been built with lightweight in mind, but with an equal focus on durability. Material was only removed from places where it would not sacrifice strength. Lighter materials were used in places where previous parts could not otherwise be made lighter. Take the forged day arms, for example. Lighter, but just as durable, if not more so than steel. The end result of this is a sled that's extremely rigid, which doesn't just make the sled more capable of taking a beating, but it also makes it easier to ride and makes it more capable of taking a hit without buckling a major component. The Summit X174 is built in a more traditional manner, using aluminum in most places with a few bits of exotic metal mixed here and there. It's no secret that the bulkhead, or the flying nun on the XM chassis, can be bent a lot more easily than it should be. The front end of any sled is the most vulnerable part during an impact, and having a weakness here is definitely not ideal. This fact is well known to Skidoo to the point that they started using thinner tubing on the front A-arms to create a failure point other than the bulkhead. The truth is, a bent front bulkhead on a Skidoo usually isn't enough to end your day, but it is an absolute pain to fix. The Axis chassis isn't known to have any areas of glaring weakness though. Aside from the bulkhead, the Summit is a very tough snowmobile, but we simply can't say it's the most durable with an issue that's as well known as this one. So, the Axis grabs its second point in the durability category. Next up, let's talk about power. When you throw a 174 inch track spinning three inch lugs onto a mountain full of heavy snow, it becomes more necessary than anywhere else to have big power on tap. Luckily, both of these sleds are not at a power deficit in any way. The Summit X174 is powered by Skidoo's legendary E-Tech 800 HO mill that puts out a claimed 160 horsepower at sea level. Anyone who's ever ridden a sled with this power plant under the hood knows it's a force to be reckoned with. But more than just powerful, the real beauty of the 800 E-Tech is how it runs. The ultra-precise fuel delivery of the E-Tech system translates into smooth and predictable power delivery at any throttle setting. It also does a fantastic job of compensating for altitude. If there's one thing everybody can agree on, it's that E-Tech works. Last season, Polaris completely reworked their 800 engine to get even more horsepower and torque than ever before. 
a lighter crank, electronically controlled exhaust valves and oil pump, perfectly tuned intake and exhaust, and a genuine set of V-Force reeds are the main talking points here. Our best guess in terms of horsepower would be somewhere around 100 to 165 at sea level. The most impressive attribute of this 800 engine though is how much power it has down low. The Clean Fire 800 literally grunts at you when you blip the throttle, but it's not like a bull ready to bolt. It's like a big Clydesdale horse, just ready to smoothly move mountains anytime you need it to. These engines needs to make any excuses to anyone. They both have Herculean torque and they run great. But at the end of the day, when you're facing a huge vertical shoot, you're gonna to wanna to have as much horsepower on tap as you can possibly get. And everybody who's ridden both of these sleds agrees, the Polaris feels like it has more power. So that's three points for the RMK. Snow Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race inspired, trail proven. Polaris claims that because the RMK is light and rigid, it's easier and requires less effort to ride. There's absolutely no question, these two attributes definitely are pluses when it comes to handling. And they combine to make a sled that is, as Polaris puts it, extremely flickable. We like flickable a lot, but Skidoo describes the handling of the Summit 174 as effortless, and since we're pretty lazy, that appeals to us just as much. We also completely agree with that description. T-Motion is incredible in how little effort it requires to pull the sled over and keep it over on its side. There's no question the RMK is a good handling snowmobile, but a Summit equipped with T-Motion is simply better, so the Summit gets its first point. Suspension isn't something most people talk a lot about when it comes to long track big paddle mountain sleds. It seems many assume that because snow is pretty soft, suspension doesn't matter as much, and they're what we like to call wrong. The Pro RMK174 is equipped with Walker Evans comp adjustable piggyback shocks up front and on the rear arm. They offer total adjustability and come tuned perfectly for mountain sledge. On the flip side, the Summit comes with a pretty basic set of shocks that, while they're tuned very well, are not adjustable at all. Why do this, you might ask? The best answer we can come up with is that they are light. And yes, light is right, but we think suspension isn't something that should be cheaped out on. With that said, we found the 174 RMK seems to have some trouble lifting its nose in the deep snow. It's not a flotation problem, it seems to be a weight transfer problem that is not present on shorter Polaris mountain sleds. The Summit lifts its nose on command. Lofting the front end of the Summit is easy, which makes it a heck of a lot more fun to play with in the powder. Ergonomically speaking, the Summit shouldn't do this better than the RMK due to its rider's weight being so far forward. But there's no question, the Summit likes to get its tips up and that's just more fun. So despite having an inferior shock package, we think the lighter front end feel of the Summit gives it the edge in the suspension department. Our final area of comparison is overall layout and design. This category includes things like chassis layout, bodywork, rider positioning, and ergonomics. The RMK is built off Polaris's latest Axis platform. The bodywork is sleek and is designed to prevent drag when the sled is on its side and to prevent paneling out when things get steep. Rider positioning is forward, but not excessively so, and bar height is on the high side compared to its competition. The engine is placed low in the chassis, so its center of gravity is low as well. As discussed before, the more rearward rider positioning would lead you to believe the sled would be easier to wheelie, but that's just not the case. The Summit has what we would describe as extreme rider forward positioning. It feels like you're almost standing right on the front of the sled. The 174 version remains in the XM chassis, which has bodywork that's not nearly as sleek as the new G4. The bars are lower than those of the RMK, but the engine isn't positioned as low. Overall, the Summit gets mixed reviews when it comes to ergonomics. Some love it, some start out not liking it and end up liking it more the more they ride it, and others just never get comfortable with it. In this category, the more universally appealing ergonomics, sleeker bodywork, and lower center of gravity combine to leave us with no other choice but to give the RMK the final point, which gives it a total of four out of six overall. In this shootout, Polaris's Axis Pro RMK174 is the clear winner, and it's extremely deserving of its new title as Snowtrax TV's best 174-inch mountain sled for 2017. But it just doesn't seem right to end this story without a few further observations. The Axis RMK is the latest and greatest chassis from Polaris. 
Skidoo's X170 4 Summit remains in the older XM chassis and it shows. The new G4 Summit addresses almost every area where the XM fell behind the axis in this test. Skidoo's explanation for not putting the 174 in the G4 chassis for 2017 is simply that time didn't allow them to do it all at once. But that seems like a strange excuse when you figure that the 165 Summit is a G4 and the 174 is just a 165 with a longer skid frame. It seems to us like it would have been very easy. It's become pretty evident that had this test been between Polaris's Axis Pro RMK174 and a Skidoo Summit X174 in the new G4 chassis, the results could have been different. I'm not saying the Summit would have won. What I am saying is that the results would have been a lot harder to determine. Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. Experience a ride you'll never forget. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Kid sleds. Right now in our industry, you're pretty much limited to a 120 or the new timber sled ripper. But besides that, you're kind of out of luck if you want to buy a sled that's bigger than a 120, but smaller than a full size. So what's the answer? Well, for this week's episode, we're going to show you a very viable answer to getting your kids a mid-sized sled that'll progress them through their riding abilities, but still keep them within the safe limits for both size and engine displacement. However, with our current Skidoo Freestyle Barn Find, we may be needing a few tweaks to bring it back up to par and keep it going all season strong. The Skidoo Freestyle was a relatively short-lived sled, but the truth is it was the perfect answer to the mid-sized problem. So why didn't it stick around? Well, truth be told, the production cost of the sled was still relatively high for the limited market it had to serve. But nowadays, you can pick up a freestyle for a reasonable buck. Sure, it may look a little rough around the edges, but parts are still readily available for this sled, and it's not hard to bring it back to its original glory, and also add some cool upgrades along the way. Now, Vern and I have traveled a lot of places together, but we've never actually done a build. My kids, yeah, they're a little bit too small for this freestyle, but your kids? Just perfect, especially yeah. my older daughter, Kaylee. She's 12, she's legal to be uh, riding on the trail, and this freestyle is gonna be a perfect sled for her. One of the first areas of concern on a sled this vintage is the track and suspension. Seeing as we have the skid frame on the bench, let's start by pulling the old stock shocks and replacing them with some brand new Ride FX 9200 series aluminum body monotube dampers. These shocks will not only improve the ride quality, but are fully serviceable, so years down the road, should you desire a rebuild, they can be freshened up. While we have the skid on the bench, it's also a good time to remove the old worn out sliders for a new pair. While there is still some life in these stockers, it doesn't cost much to do this and will ensure that we don't have to repull the skid anytime soon. The stock track on a freestyle, yeah, it's really nothing to write home about. And while Vern is gonna owe me for this next task, it's really not that hard on a freestyle. And swapping the track is what I'm referring to. The process is fairly simple no matter what sled you're working on. Chain case comes apart and the lower gear is removed. It's now a good time to inspect your chain for wear but this one looks pretty good. On the opposite side, the axle support must be removed and then it's out with the axle and track and back in with a brand new Camso Ice Attack pre-studded 1.2 inch lug track. This will increase the freestyle's ability in all snow conditions, especially icy, and help when Vern's kids wanna do a little free riding with the freestyle. Now it wouldn't exactly be right for us to give all this attention to the rear of the sled and not pay some attention to the front end. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with the front end overhaul. Bushings and bearings get worn, so instead of just replacing those, we opted to replace the A-arms with those found on the 08 Freestyle Backcountry. It adds extra width to the sled, which increases stability for kids and also makes it handle much better in the corners. Along with the arms, we're installing matching IFS shocks to the rear skid, RideFX 9200 series. These will increase the bump absorption ability for the Freestyle and truly maximize the extra leverage on the front suspension that it now has over the shocks. And hey, they do look pretty nice too. And finally up front, we're gonna ditch the old composite skis. We're gonna go for a new plastic ski that's more modernized as well as a new carbide runner. And Skidoo's 5.7 ski is the perfect ski. And we'll be matching that up with Woody's four inch dually carbide runner. Because the front end of the freestyle is so light and the added studs in the track will cause more push, the extra grip of a dually and the better ski profile will really help a younger rider to feel in control and not experience too much push. When we add the nice white Skidoo matching ski hoops and rivet studs, we have a complete front end package. But to truly call this build complete, we need to ensure we have a proper revitalization and we would be amiss if we didn't make a call to our buddy at Mario Design and have a new set of graphics made up. And we dubbed this build the Freestyle X. It suits the upgraded nature of the vehicle and it looks great. 
We took this build just a few steps farther than you may need to, but it's to show you that there are lots of options out there to bring an old sled up to new kid's standards. And you know what? With a simple phone call to your dealer, you can get all the parts and accessories to bring an old gal like this back to its glory. Yeah, your kids are going to freak. Oh, yeah. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. There are a handful of iconic names in the snowmobile industry, which conjure up images of imposing performance. I would argue there is but one name which generates snowmo reverence. The name, Thundercat. Even if you're too young to remember the original 1993 T-Cat, the handle Thundercat most likely requires little deciphering. When the original 900cc two-stroke triple was introduced, producing an outrageous 163 horsepower, it established an immediately iconic benchmark as the standard which all snowmobiles, even snowmobiles built 20 years later, would be measured by. It's no secret Arctic Cat is ending their decades-long agreement with Suzuki. At the same time, Arctic Cat's newly minted relationship with Yamaha is opening the door on a new world of engine technology. This new technology has the potential to blow your preconceived ideas out of the water about what a high-performance snowmobile should be. You're looking at the most powerful production snowmobile by any measure in the business. There's more arm stretching thrust and track shredding low end squeeze here than we've ever seen in the snowmo industry. How much power? By Arctic Cat's own admission, the new T-Cat pumps out 180 horsepower. And we're here to tell you this number is not a stretch. It is imposing and formidable power that starts just off engagement and propels you past the C note in what seems like an instant. The 998cc triple is not the same engine as the much beloved 1049 triple. This new 998cc mill uses a turbocharger and an intercooler with a unique blow off or bypass circuit. The net effect is a strangely civilized and bulletproof 180 ponies under your right thumb. There's no weird hissing and popping with the 998 turbo Yamaha. The engine accepts throttle seamlessly and allows you to step out of the loud handle without the former Suzuki Turbo's annoying cacophony. The 998 uses special heat-treated rods, stronger pistons, and a slightly lowered initial compression ratio to accommodate the Turbo's relentless pressurization of the engine's three holes. The engine is tightly packaged as a result of specially tooled hoses and bracketry to produce a mind-boggling, compact and tight power package considering the imposing power on tap. Here's one more. The 998 triple turbo is 15 pounds lighter than the Suzuki 1100 turbo power pack. Last year, Arctic Cat incorporated Team Industries clutches on all their high performance models. This was a foundational and important improvement which affected both durability and performance. The Team Industries laser machine primary and the Boss Roller Cam Secondary capably handle the 998's imposing thrust. The Thundercat displays all new lighter and pleasing to the eye bodywork, which nets vastly simpler side panel and hood removal. The look is leaner from the side and lower from the front. The new LED headlights sports a slick Audi-ish LED light strip that's lit whenever the key is on. Dramatically improved fit and finish of the new skin is immediately noticeable. The function of the skin is immediately appreciated with easy access to the engine and the dry sump oil tank and dipstick. The Thundercats ergos are comfortably familiar using the same Pro Cross seat and handlebar combination. We are standing and applauding at Arctic Cat's new skinny heated handle grips. The view over the bars is similar to the Pro Cross variants we've come to know and love and includes the new multifunction digital display which allows owners the option of positioning information where they prefer in the display's four separate data windows. The rider's envelope on this chassis is exceptionally warm and the protection afforded by the stock windshield is completely acceptable. Suspension details are carried over from the Procross platform, except for this one important change. Second generation Fox QS3s are used up front and on the rear arm. This is great news for Thundercat buyers. 
In our opinion, the Procross Slide Action Skid equipped with a QS3 delivers the best ride we've ever experienced with this chassis. The adjustability afforded by the simple three position clicker is immediate and easy to tune to any rider's preference. The Slide Action Skid loves jigglers and low amplitude chatter, while the QS3 takes over when the bumps get serious. It's intriguing that the Thundercat only comes as a 137. With this much power on tap, there is just no way a 129 could even come close to staying hooked up, even with studs. Riding the Thundercat can best be described as a life-changing experience. The power here is beyond what any stable, well-balanced snowmobiler could ever desire. That being said, who thought snowmobilers were stable, let alone well-balanced? Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. Art to Cat. Share our passion. And by Northwest Ontario. What are you doing this weekend? If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content from Snowtracks TV, click the like button and subscribe to the Snowtracks TV YouTube channel.